Hello, my name is Dr. Taufik Bora. I am an oral maxillofacial surgeon with a special interest in TMJ disorders, TMJ arthroscopy, and total TM joint replacement. Today, I am here in front of you to talk about TMJ arthroscopy as a procedure. Uh, where is it indicated? What are the risks involved? And uh, how do we technically perform it? Uh, in today's video, I would uh, uh, like to believe that the people watching this video are already aware of what is TMJ disorders, uh, what is a disc basically, uh, what, do you, wh what do I mean by disc displacement, uh, anterior disc displacement. I would, I would believe that all, all the people watching the video are familiar with this kind of uh, terminology. So not trying to go into detail and explain what are these problems, I will directly jump to what is TMJ arthroscopy. Now, TMJ arthroscopy is a procedure to go to when you are detected on an MRI with the TMJ disc displacement with or without reduction. Mm, basically, patients who uh, qualify for this kind of procedure are patients who have difficulty in chewing, opening the mouth, uh, constant clicking, increased clicking over the years. These are the patients who technically qualify for these kind of uh, procedures. Now, what is TMJ arthroscopy? When you put a camera inside the abdomen and perform a procedure that's normally termed as laparoscopy. So any camera which enters the joint, let it be any form of joint, let it be knee, let it be elbow, let it be the wrist, it's called as arthroscopy. TMJ, the temporomandibular joint being the only joint in the face, we are also performing arthroscopy in the TMJ. Now, when a surgeon performs an arthroscopy in the temporomandibular joint, he puts in a camera which is small as 1.9 mm in diameter, which is as good as a thick needle. Uh, it enters the joint and gives an entire 360 view of your joint to the surgeon. Now looking inside the joint, the surgeon can look at the disc, the quality of the disc, uh, spots of inflammation, any points which are, the, if, if there is any perforation inside the joint, all such things can be easily seen using an arthroscope. In TMJ arthroscopy, where there are levels, level 1, level 2, level 3. Level 1 arthroscopy is mostly diagnostic. However, it does not limit the TMJ arthroscopy to just looking inside the joint. You can enter one more instrument inside the joint using one more port. This is called as level 2 arthroscopy, where you put in one more instrument and you reposition the disc. Level 3 arthroscopy is a little higher form of arthroscopy where you put in one more instrument inside the port. So you can put almost up to four ports inside the joint and you can get the disc back in position as well as try to pass a stitch through the disc. You, why do you pass the stitch through, uh, through the disc? So that you can anchor the disc in position. So these form of treatments are used to get the disc back in position. Apart from this, TMJ arthroscopy, uh, via, via TMJ arthroscopy, you can use lasers, you can use coblators. These are some higher form of uh, gadgets that can be used to get your joints back in order and increase the range of motion in all and decrease the uh, pain and discomfort and the stiffness uh, of the joint. Mm, uh, now coming to the question that whether... Uh, Getting the disc back in position is of importance or no. Getting the disc back in position is important. What happens is in the world of TMJ, now there is a debate saying that whether the disc should be in position or it's okay if the disc is not in position. So the answer to this question is a little complex. I would try to explain it in minimal words possible. There was a time when getting the disc back in position meant an open surgery. A patient used to go to a clinician, he would probably suggest an MRI, MRI would say the disc is displaced. Now that clinician would have a patient in front of him with a disc displacement. However, it's not that critical. The disc is displaced, it is reducing, patient is having a constant click, he's, he's irritated with the sound, it's led to muscular muscle involvement and now he has stiffness in the face and it's a cascade of events which has gone ahead. In this scenario, now this clinician was to suggest that, okay, let's get your disc back in position and let's do a supportive treatment using orthotics or splints. Mm, this would lead to an open joint surgery. 
any surgeon who would want to replace the disc would have to perform an open joint surgery. However, that is not the case now. Now we know better, we have better technology available with us. We can perform an TMJ arthroscopy and get the disc back in position with minimal intervention. So, having said that, there is one thing which is understood in TMJ of TMJ is that if the disc is displaced, it will cause TMJ arthritis and internal derangement and it will lead to a cascade of events which will cause joint problems. Having said that, uh, waiting for the joint to remodel and get things back in order, it is better to just go in there and just get the disc back in position. So, if, if I have the skill, if I have the armamentarium and uh, if the patient is there over there with uh, this displacement without reduction and is facing problem, I would uh, go and get the disc disc back in position. Considering okay. TMJ arthroscopy, uh, TMJ arthroscopy requires uh, one day admission at max. Patient, uh, there is very less uh, downtime in TMJ arthroscopy. The patient who is getting operated today morning, say, uh, can go home the next day morning or that day, depending on the recovery of the patient. Um, the risk involved in TMJ arthroscopy. So, when you talk about an open joint surgery, there is considerable risk involved. Obviously, there are incisions involved. Where you talk about TMJ arthroscopy, the risk of facial nerve damage is very minimal. Um, there is absolutely no reason why to believe that when you put an arthroscope, uh, you would end up damaging the nerve until unless there is some uh, anatomical variation. However, there are chances, but the chances are very less, very less. Uh, considering scar formation, cosmetic point of view, uh, there will be just three holes in front of your ear and there is absolutely no scar formation with TMJ arthroscopy whatsoever. So, all in all, it's a very minimally invasive procedure. It takes less amount of time. It is very light on the patient as well as on the patient's body. Um, patient can get back to work easily and very uh, fast post-procedure. Obviously, post arthroscopy, the patient is uh, told to have diet restrictions and is told to wear uh, orthotic or uh, lateral stabilization splint because here stabilizing the occlusion, if at all needed, is important so that whatever changes you have bought inside the joint maintain for a longer period of time. There is only one potential problem with TMJ arthroscopy and that is minimal intervention because it is such a precise procedure you can only do so much how much you can uh, see inside the joint if you talk about an aminectomy or an uh, more aggressive form of tmj disorder it will require an open joint surgery so limitation of uh, intervention is something which comes with an arthroscopy um, when performed in the right indicated case it can do wonders and it has very nice results Thank you.